Hi everyone, it's Andy from Stoke Haunted and these are my views on The Last Investigation, the investigation that you're watching now. Um, if you were to say to me what was the investigation like, you guys have watched the video and to be perfectly honest, from your point of view, watching it as the general public, it doesn't look like it was a very... Um, active venue and I appreciate it does not look very active on footage uh, what I will say it's one of those venues that you've got to be there to appreciate just how negative it was actually in the premises the moment you walk in something just doesn't feel quite right now yeah you can walk in most places and, and get a, a gut feeling that there's something there that you don't like this was one of those places, particularly the snooker room or the pool room. Um, everyone that walked in there said they felt strange the moment they walked through the door. Difficult to explain what, but every single person in the team that walked in that room without being prompted by anyone else had some kind of strange experience. Now, that's something that you can't actually see on video camera. You can't pick it up on audio, you can't pick it up on video camera. Now, if you've seen the back episodes of this particular one, episode 20, you'll notice that a lot of people had issues. Mediums were going down like flies, um, people's attitudes changed. I'm never normally one for um, not being able to get my words out. I stumbled on camera, I couldn't speak, I just had a complete brain blockage, mind block blockage, call it what you will. Um, for the first time in a long time, a venue that looked like it wasn't going to offer a great deal, hammered, for the want of a better term, our mediums. Um, we had four mediums on site and some sensitives on site and every single one of them had issues. Um, being taken over, feeling mood swings for no apparent reason. Um, it's a strange venue, an extremely strange venue. From a viewer's perspective, not a great deal was captured. Um, not a great deal was seen the, there's not really any knocks, bangs, scratches, pops, whistles it was just one of those It just it's a gut feeling you need to be there to appreciate just how negative the venue is now we are scheduled to go back early January next year 2014 and hopefully we'll see if we get the same effects then that we got this time so for you guys and I'll review this now as you guys was it a very active 
investigation venue not to watch. It was not an active venue for video or audio footage. Um, it was more for personal experiences. Hopefully, <clears throat> knowing this now, when we go back next time, we can try and get more footage of people's outbursts, uh, mood swings. We, we've tried our best to show you on this footage people's attitudes changing. But if you, if you don't know the person before, you probably wouldn't even notice subtle changes um, like friends and family that you're very close to. You notice when they're in a bad mood. You notice when there's an attitude change. Our team are pretty much like that. We're all like a close-knit family. When something's not quite right, you know something's not quite right. I'm the biggest sceptic in the group. It affected me. Am I saying it's paranormal? I have no idea. I don't know what it was, but I know that building does have some negative activity attached to it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to add, rate and subscribe. Check us out on our social media networking sites. Until the next time, take care. Bye bye. If you can't talk through Matt, I've just put something on the table here with these lights on. If you speak anywhere where these lights are, it will pick your voice up. There's five microphones inside there pointing in different directions. Can you speak to it? Are you talking into this microphone? Because it keeps flashing. That you don't want. Hi, it's me again. Just want to conclude a few thoughts about our investigation to the Wagon and Horses, which was last Friday. Um, there's, a, there's a few things I want to talk about. and um, Basically, the, there was a lot of elements to the investigation that we could have done, but we didn't get around to, to time constraints. So, if we do return to the Wagon and Horses, I would very much like to investigate Room 6. There's something about the outer building, to me, that very much appeals to... Uh, to warrant investigation. There's there's an energy about that outbuilding that's totally different to the rest of the building. Uh, I know that sounds quite cliche, um, but it really does feel that way. Also, the outer grounds, I do believe, have a lot of what 
what we call roaming spirits. Um, when we were there on the night, I was, um, and we were sat in the, the main room where the, the nice fireplace was, um, there was a lot of what wandering spirits along the Manchester Road, um, moving south from uh, from the Manchester area, shall we say. I mean, it's not that far as Manchester, but I'm trying to get in terms of um, relativity. Um, including people that would have been um, ill and protected by the church because due to their illness and they may be even shunned from the rest of society. And there are other, other elements to the area as well. As, as I said on my introduction video, um, the, the area has uh, a history of magic associated with Alistair Crowley and some of his colleagues. I'm not sure that has a real connection to the wagon and horses, but the area itself is very interesting. Um, also, when I was delivering some trance, there was, um, Harum said that there was a wraith nearby in, in the quarry area, which uh, we were told uh, on the night that really isn't too far from us at all, uh, where we were investigating. So if we could find some um, local stories that could corroborate that, that would be very interesting as well. Um, other things that, that were interesting to me is there was what we call the pool room. Um, I had an experience in there that I got very, very annoyed very quickly um, by very little things. and. Normally that, that that kind of thing wouldn't bother me, but, but on the night it seemed to be that um, within that room I was very much um, affected emotionally by whatever presence was in there. And, and to be honest, I, got, I don't think anybody that was in the team really didn't feel some con kind of connection um, with that room as though they were feeling rather irritable or annoying. Um, once I knew, uh, personally, from a mediumship point of view, once I knew what the situation was, because I was quite oblivious to it at the time, whether my card was down or, or whatever, I'm not quite sure, um, I was able to uh, do something about it and block it out. And after returning to that room, I felt quite different. Um, so what, what would be interesting to see for us, as part of a control experiment is would um, anybody that was impartial that hadn't been there before, had, should we return, see what they say about the pool room? Uh, and how they feel, etc. Um, concerning other things, um, I, the dining room's intriguing, um, and I, I got to play on the piano in there just to raise the energy a bit. And I, I in there, was helping Liz to to fight off an energy that she she really didn't feel comfortable with, but wasn't able to express it at the time. There was the, when we were in in the venue itself, particularly the pool room, but afterwards we were in the dining room where there's, there's been activity reported, is that we wanted to say things, but th that we were being stopped from saying them, or we were being interrupted, or we couldn't get the words out, or whatever. And it wasn't just me that was affected this way, Liz was affected that way, other members of the team were affected that way, so... Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be interested to go back there and see what else the venue produces from areas we didn't investigate. Um, other than that, what I will say is, um, reported activity on the night was, was very minimal. Um, but I'm not going to let that put me off um, wanting more answers from the venue. As always, we go to a venue and sometimes it can be quiet, sometimes it can be active. There is really no way of predicting what kind of activity we have. But I, I would like to uh, investigate further with, with more equipment and see what, what could be anomalous that would pick up. Um, the one thing that did strike out to me as, as interesting was that um, when we were late on and we, we were asking for a, for a call out, there was, there was some temperature variation. Um, uh, Andy reported, because we, we were all feeling a cold draft around our middle area, and Andy um, sat down on the floor and tried to see if a draft was either coming from under a door, but the temperature what we recorded was actually lower uh, at like a, a, a foot level than sorry, it was warmer um, at, at a lower level, and it was actually colder in the midrift area, which is what we were reporting, and at a head height, it was a lot warmer again. So, and it's one of those things that's very difficult to rule out. What I would like to do is get some equipment that can measure air current and temperature, so we can see actually where drafts are coming from, from a baseline point of view. I mean, I know you can approach a window and say like, oh, it's coming from here. Um, but we would actually have a measure of it, so if we do get a cold draft, we'll be able to say, oh, where's that draft coming from, is, there, is it windy outside, etc., and check where the conditions to correlate any evidence we have. Um, and that's about it for me for now. Um, but I'm very much looking forward to getting back to the wagon and horses for one reason or another. Um, what I will say is if you do have any questions for us, by all means, drop us a message 
uh, up there or a comment down there. We'd like to hear from you and uh, we'd like your input. Thank you again and um, stay safe. Hi, it's Liz from Stoke Haunted. I thought I'd just let you know my thoughts on last week's investigation at the Wagging and Horses in Congleton. Um, it was a very, very strange place. It seemed to have varying effects on different people. Um, I had a bit of an episode where apparently I wasn't myself, even though I can't remember anything um, much. I can remember snippets, but obviously um, I was told that I glared at Sarah. I swore quite badly, which, as you all know me, I don't do that. Um, I was really irate. I was really angry. Um, as you've seen from the footage, Matt tried to um, give me crystals, which I was very irritated to be given. Now, obviously, I don't know whether this because I was tired. I've, I was at work all day and hadn't slept much the night before. Um, so it could be a number of things that had caused it. Activity-wise, it wasn't the most active of venues, but maybe the... This is because it was the first time any paranormal team have been in there. Um, we have been assured by Stuart the Landlord and obviously other um, regulars that there are paranormal incidents that happen on a regular basis. So obviously, you know, we have been given the green light to go back um, as often as we like. So maybe next time we go, it will be more active and we'll have more audio to show you guys. So obviously take care. If you've got anything to ask us, Drop us a line on the Facebook page and obviously keep watching on the YouTube channel. Bye. Hi guys, it's me again. Um, I thought I would leave a brief message just to outline how I feel about the Wagon and Horses investigation last week. Um, initially, I'm absolutely exhausted. I have been since we got back. Um, it's about a week, yeah, it's a, it's a week since we, um, we did the investigation and I'm still feeling very, very drained. Um, I'm not sure if that's related to the weather or what or whether or not it's um, related to the venue uh, with regards to the venue though um, it's a very unique place uh, and it certainly holds a lot of potential and as a resident team now I hope that we'll get the opportunity to keep going back uh, and learning some more along with the staff um, aside from that I was little concerned to think that all the invest all the uh, sensitives that were investigating the pool room all got overshadowed at some point that concerns me um, as so it must be something reasonably powerful or reasonably strong to be able to do that um, as I've never seen it done before especially not you know as a trio um, I felt that time got away from us um, we'd be doing something that we thought was lasting say half an hour and then when we check the clock it's more than an hour's gone so we were running at normal speed but it felt like time was going twice as fast so we lost a lot of time um, and found that we had to come home much sooner than I think anybody would, you know anybody would like um, it's still very mysterious I think the place I, I'd call it mysterious because we haven't unlocked a lot of secrets yet um, but uh, with thanks to the landlord, um, I hope that will go back soon. So thank you very much for watching. We appreciate all your views and all your thoughts. So uh, we'll chat again soon. Bye. Hi, and welcome to the Wagon and Horses, just on the other side of Compton. I'm just sat here at the moment writing a few basic notes down while uh, we wait for the landlord to come and have an interview with us. Um, the idea being, I think, is uh, we have more or less full access to all areas. So at the moment I'm feeling paranoid. Um, I don't know whether that's just bad mood or whether or not it's something being impressed on me. Uh, I'm aware of the other guys are feeling kind of a little bit antsy and ready to argue I think. Um, so yeah at the moment we feel like we've got plenty to work with so uh, I'll get back to my notes and we'll catch you in a bit. Uh, thank you for having the Stoke Water team in the pub which is the wagon and horses. 
Um, would you like to introduce yourself to anybody that might be watching? Well, I'm Stuart, I'm the landlord from the Wagon Horses and I've run this pub for about seven and a half years now. Have you um, only been here for seven and a half years or have you known the, the area in the pub before? I've been a customer in the pub for about the last 35 years or so, I've moved into the area when I was 16. So. Right. Um, do you know any of history or anything of historical value that might benefit the team? Um, it was an old coaching house and obviously when the photographs in the hall, the old photographs were still on the internet. And I can remember it being converted 15 years ago from the stage to what it is now, the old six letting room. So it was pretty recent then that it was oh, still. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you mind me asking what your personal stance is on the whole subject of paranormal? Um, I've always got a very open mind. I've seen lots of mediums and some of it's come right, some of it hasn't. Uh, I've seen gypsies and they'd probably be more sort of like correct on predicting the future. And then we get these deja vu moments that come along and think, yeah, that's right, or how did you know that? And, you know, so I'm very, very interested, you know, uh, not suspicious, I'm interested. You're kind of waiting for the right thing to tip you right over to the Completely, yeah, completely. Yeah. It's still got an open mind, of, uh, I think we'd call it an agnostic. What do you think would get you to be a full believer? I've effects? seen in the building, you know, what I suspect was, you know, an image of some sort. That a friend of mine the other night saw exactly the same, other people have described it, so I'm probably more of a believer than not. Okay. And if you allow how, how much of it is common knowledge to the people that come in as um, regular drinkers or how much is the story kind of wrong? Well, it's not. I mean, my wife, you know, she probably told a few tales and this, that and the other, but you can tell they're really seriously interested people and then they quite often come out with experience. Again, tonight I was discussing what he was doing here with somebody and he told me a story in Swindon Park, that far from here, you know, as I discussed with one of your colleagues tonight, you know, a full blown idiot, and just what is it like a human being? So if I saw that, you know, I'd be 100% convinced at the moment. It's a shadow or? It's, it's one of those things where you can't see the leak and be wondering, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I believe that some of your staff have adopted um, one particular energy, and um, they've, they've affectionately nicknamed her. Um, mm. Can you tell me anything about that? Lizzie, well, we, we, we kept getting things, strange things happening, not long after we moved here. We moved in in the May of uh, 2006, and uh, you see glasses fall off, you think, oh, we've put them on badly, and there's one particular girl, Charlotte, and when she came on shift, it went ballistic. Not just fall off, they'd fly across from the top shelf down into the bar area. So, and it got so bad that Charlotte left. You know, it was, it was so active, it was unreal. Uh, another member who was no longer with us, um, and I don't mean that in an employment tent, um, she sprang on the bottom of the stairs one day, and, oh, I don't believe this, I don't believe this. And so we've seen it. And she described the same lady that some other customer had seen walking up the ramp, mid-afternoon, he's still doing food, and, and why is that? I think it was a wife and uh, one of the managers at the time. She said, well, there's a lady eating at table two or at table two, I can't remember. And she described this old lady, a mop hat, and this, that, the other. And different people, for different, have all described this. So we affectionately known as Lizzie. Uh, a medium came in a couple of years ago and said to my wife, she, she had no idea who he was, and we're not alone here, are we? What, what do you mean? And what she explains, she said, no, no, that's Auntie Lizzie. She said, no. Anti Rosie, no, actually, it's Lizzie. And uh, after that, we've called the Lizzie or Rosie or whatever. And then he goes, uh, Oh, Rosie or Lizzie, that's it again. So the activity uh, wasn't linked to the whole uh, Auntie Rosie thing. The activity was, am I right in thinking that you were moving furniture around or moving in at that particular time? Uh, we just moved in when we started to notice things. And I said I've been coming here about 35 years and uh, I've never really spoken to this about other tenants who have all known the last since the sort of like uh, mid to sort of like early 90s and uh, never discussed anything about it. So uh, I don't know what their experiences were. Okay. Um, whether 
first-hand experience or a story that you've told, what, what story related to the paranormal in this building is most significant to you? The most recent one is uh, only this week. <coughs> I said to do it earlier. Um, the October seems to be month of you know, most activity, and this, the till started back to know, and we thought it was just electronic. We had electronic problems in the past, you know, unexplained. Um, we could actually see the till, the numbers being pressed on the till, actually, and the till would be picking and picking, doing all sorts. And this has been going on for a few weeks, and this week, uh, I sat with a colleague in the bar, speaking at the till. I wish that till would shut up, and just then, the door of the till drove open wide. Wow. You've mentioned that the month of October seems to be when it gets busy with it's kind more of... more noticeable well, anyway, yeah. Is there anything else that kind of, kind of triggers things off that you're aware of? No, not really. Do you get the vibe of any energies that are um, negative or...? Never in this pub. When I was younger, in my mid-twenties, I lived in a cottage on the estate because this was part of a big estate and there was this one night I woke up and the room was like electric. Nothing to do with this building, but you know, and that's, I think, the only other experience that I've ever had. Um, but, say, it wasn't here, but I've never experienced that here. Uh, yeah, no, this is in the night, you know, creaking floorboards or... The bird was coming in through the window again or something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, the rooms, which are just across the way in the old cottage, um, customers have, have heard things being moved around in the middle of the night. There's been nobody in there. And uh, there was one time that, uh, lovely stay here, but whoever was in room six, they was underneath it, said, you know, thumping and banging all night. And sorry, you were the only people in there. I joke with people when they say, is it haunted? They say, of course it is, you know. But then see the reaction and say, no, it's just messing with me. Am I right? I think I spoke, I spoke to um, Carol, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, a couple of weeks ago, and she mentioned that you had some issues with the dog upstairs in there. Yeah, again, that was going back to not long after we moved over, again, October. And uh, prior to that, the phone, the internal phone, would ring, but you'd look at it in the bedroom, and it was the kitchen, and there was nobody down there, it was all alarmed. And Fault, you know, and this happened several times, middle of the night, dip, 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 and it ring. So I thought like that. So anyway, you know, then it started ringing the downstairs kitchen back to front. So what happened is, um, my well, wife was upstairs getting ready, and uh, we thought it was a dog pressing the buttons, because it used to do it in my car, I had down three kit. And uh, she's there on the bed, and she's like, she was left the bathroom window open, it's gone really, really cold. So she got up and the bathroom window went on, the, open, the hole was flat, you know, there's no windows at all. And just then, the uh, internal phone went. So again, she looked at the dog and the dog was in the room with her. But the dogs, I don't think I've ever been susceptible. It's all the same, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. Um, if you were to choose one specific area that the team focus on tonight, where would you like us to? The whole pub. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say this one. The, the experience I said, I've seen a shadow, and uh, <clears throat> it was early evening, half past six. I'd come home from my other job, and I had some things, and we went into the bottle store. And uh, quite often, our girls are loading the washing machine, and I'll show you later the table there with stuff on it. I could see, uh, I thought one of the girls bent over loading the washing. So I put myself, I turned around about to say, hi, it, and just then this black shadow went across the wall and went out through the cellar where, um, you know, it was amazing. Uh, a few weeks ago, um, me and the couple was having a drink, but it's all right, we're friends, so he's allowed to stay as long as he wants. And uh, we're talking, talking, just stopped in mid floor. That's all. You won't believe this. You won't believe this, and I will. Go on, tell me. He said, I won't believe it. I said, no. It looked like you'd just seen a ghost. And he saw it go across the fireplace, it's shadow. The fireplace in, in the joining room? Fireplace, yeah. My wife and uh, a friend was staying hours away, and they were sat down in the pub one night, and it possibly was summertime, I can't remember. And it was early hours in the morning, there was chit-chat, chit-chat, chit, and all of a sudden the room went sort of funny and electric. And they never saw anything, but they couldn't wait to get upstairs. Okay, my final thing is, um, your 
premises, um, we've recently come to an agreement where Stoke wanted to now your resident team. That's correct. Um, would you mind me asking you what what Stoke? Because you've had um, you've had people come in that are mediums and things before now. What made you select Stoke Haunted as, as the first resident? Uh, persuasion, really. I mean, powers up. 